It's going to keep going, isn't it? She'll never stop. Don't worry, sweetie. You're gonna be okay. What about the person we show it to? What happens to them? Wow! So that was the ring! I can't believe I've finally seen it after all these years! Hello? Hello? Pardon? I I'm sorry, I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, hi. How you doing? Yeah, good. Um, did you watch the ring? Yeah, I did, yeah, just finished. What, what do you think? Yeah, it was good, yeah. Should we do the podcast? Uh, yeah. Hello and welcome to episode 80 of the How to Survive podcast. This week, in a slight tweak to the scheduled programming, we're not taking on 2017's Rings, but we're taking on 2002's The Ring instead, the Gore Verbinski original of the American series. Now, why is that, Joe? Well, uh, we were going to do Rings, as you mentioned, and we even trailed it last week. We said, we're going to do Rings, so everyone look forward to that. And I imagine, you know, our listeners flocked to the cinema in their droves to see it. Yeah. Uh, but we did not. We didn't, no. Uh, by the time we got round to the, the earliest point at which we could watch it mm. since last week's show, uh, it was basically only showing in one place yeah. for an extortionate amount of money yeah. for yeah. what has been widely considered a dreadful film. And mm. we, we have our limits. We have our limits. Exactly. If you think I'm going to go and spend... Fifteen pounds. Well, it was fifteen fifteen pound each. Yeah, and then yeah. plus popcorn, plus drinks, plus dinner afterwards. <laughs> Travel. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not worth it. No, I'd rather watch the uh, three pound HMV DVD yeah. of The Ring. Correct. Yeah, yeah, and uh, which we hadn't seen anyway. So maybe if we had gone to see Rings, it wouldn't have made any sense. Yeah, I've, I've I saw it quite a few years ago, but yeah, I haven't seen it in some time. Mm. We haven't covered it on the podcast up until now. And so if you have not seen The Ring, as Joe had not seen The Ring, uh, then please beware, there are spoilers mm. ahead in the podcast. So go away and watch it and then report back for our in-depth analysis. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll talk about it a bit mm. uh, and then we'll talk about how we'd survive in The Ring. Correct. And so let's kick off by recapping... What exactly happened in The Ring? So, Joe, during a sleepover, you remember this from yeah. the film, uh, high school friends Katie and Becca discuss an urban legend from the area that there's a videotape that kills anyone who watches it seven days after watching it. Katie confesses to Becca that she watched the same tape last week without knowing the urban legend around mm. it, seemingly. Six days and 23 hours, 55 minutes <laughs> yeah, ago. Exactly, yeah. yeah. At 10pm, Katie witnesses supernatural occurrences downstairs, flees to her bedroom, only to be killed by an unseen force. Mm. At the funeral, Katie's aunt Rachel, a journalist who has a son named Aidan, is asked by her sister to investigate the mysterious circumstances behind Katie's death. Ruth informs her that she found her daughter's gruesomely distorted corpse in the closet and that her official cause of death was a heart attack, despite Katie being an otherwise healthy teenager. Rachel later learns about the legend of the cursed videotape from Katie's remaining friends and that Becca was institutionalised after witnessing Katie being killed. She also discovers that Katie's boyfriend and her two other friends all died in bizarre accidents on the same night at 10pm. Rachel eventually travels to Shelter Mountain Inn and stays at Cabin 12, the same cabin where Katie and her friends watch the cursed videotape. Rachel watches the tape, after which the phone rings. Rachel hears a childish voice utter seven days. She enlists help from her ex-boyfriend Noah Clay, a video analyst. 
Noah is initially sceptical, but is eventually convinced when they both experience supernatural symptoms of the curse throughout the week. They discover that the tape was not made by conventional electronic equipment, as Noah requests Rachel to make a copy for further study. They investigate for clues within the contents of the cursed videotape, including the brief hidden imagery of a lighthouse. Meanwhile, at home, Rachel discovers Aidan watching the cursed videotape, much to her dismay. Rachel researches the lighthouse and discovers that it was located in Moesco Island, the home of an ill-fated horse breeder named Anna Morgan, the same woman who appears on the cursed videotape. It was revealed that Anna's horses were involved in a highly publicised mass suicide, which led to her depression and eventual suicide herself. Rachel travels to Moesco Island to investigate her past and leaves Aidan at home to be babysat whilst Noah searches for Anna's medical files at a psychiatric hospital, which contains missing medical footage. On the ferry, Rachel discovers Anna had an adopted daughter named Samara who possessed Nensha, allowing her to burn disturbing images into the minds of people, animals and objects. Nensha? Yeah, so it's like a Japanese word meaning the ability to uh, sort of print images out of your mind, like burn images into things with your mind. Is that mentioned in the film? Yeah, well, there's the um, the sort of X-ray style photos that are in Samara's file, yeah. which are called thermographic images. Right, uh, so she did that with... She did that with her mind. Some kind of telekinesis. Yeah, it's, not exa- it's not exactly spelled out, yeah. um, other than the fact that she uh, appears to be able to sort of leave her handprint on yeah, people yeah. and later we see a, a mural of a tree sure that she's what's it called N- nigsu nensha nensu Nen- nensha nensha yeah imagine if you watched the the, the japanese version ringu mm. they'd say oh it's nensha and you'd go oh okay yeah Rachel meets Anna's surviving husband, Richard, but he becomes agitated when she starts asking him about Samara and the cursed videotape. She then speaks to the island's physician, Dr. Grasnik, who explains that Anna experienced horrible visions and dreams after Samara began burning gruesome images into her mind. Rachel watches the missing medical footage, which was revealed to be Samara explaining her powers to her psychiatrist, during a psychiatric session. As the footage ends, Richard abruptly strikes her in the head. Assuming that Richard abused and killed Samara, she confronts Richard, but he was revealed to be one of Samara's past victims and decides to end the torment Samara inflicted upon him by electrocuting himself in the bathtub. Noah arrives as they discover an image of the same tree found in both Shelter Mountain Inn and the cursed videotape behind the wallpaper in the attic of the horse barn, where Samara was kept to prevent her from harming anyone else with her powers. So basically the implication is that she drove the barn full of horses to suicide by burning horrible images into their minds as well. Right. Returning to Shelter Mountain Inn, they discover a well beneath the floorboards of Cabin 12. Rachel accidentally falls into the well, where she reveals... Well, accidentally yeah. is, is, is harsh on Rachel, because <laughs> basically yeah. a TV is manipulated into falling into her. So it's not like in. she just goes, oh, look at this well. Oh, no! Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Well, this well, <laughs> these stones sure are slippery. <laughs> yeah. In the well, she receives a vision revealing that Anna was the one who killed Samara via suffocating her with a plastic bag and dumping her body into the well, where she survived for seven days, Joe. So that's where that came from. Yeah. Yeah. Finding her corpse, Rachel attempts to appease her spirit by offering her a proper burial, and when she realises that the time she was supposed to be killed by the curse has passed, she and Noah return home, believing the curse was finally broken. And that's how the ring ends. Only it's not, though, Joe, is mm. it? It's not. It's a, it's a, it's a red um, herring of an end. I stood up ready to turn the TV off at that yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Aiden, however, warns Rachel that Samara never sleeps, hinting that the curse was never-ending. Rachel realises that Noah is next to die as she drives to his apartment to warn him. Meanwhile, Noah witnesses an image of a well being suddenly displayed on his TV screen. Samara, in the form of a vengeful ghost, emerges from the well, crawls out of the TV screen and reveals her hideously waterlogged face to Noah, frightening and ultimately killing him via a heart attack. 
Rachel realises she is too late to save him after discovering his gruesomely distorted corpse in his apartment. She returns home and furiously destroys the original cursed videotape, but realises that she had been spared after making a copy and passing the copy unwittingly to Noah. Rachel decides to save Aiden by making a copy of the initial copy she sent to Noah. Aiden asks what will become of the person they send the copy to, as Rachel remains silent, with the obvious knowledge that she's uh, murdering someone to save her son. Yep. And that is the end of The Ring, Joe, 2002's The Ring, mm-hmm. directed by Gore Verbinski. Yeah. What did you think? Yeah, it was okay. It was good. Mm-hmm. I'd say about uh, 75 out of 100. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a 74. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Rotten Tomato score. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I I pretty much agree with that. Yeah, that's seven out of ten. It's not it's not bad. It's um, it's got an interesting sort of sickly color palette. I thought. Always. Yes. Yeah. I think yeah. it's probably the first of those kind of movies to do that. Yeah. Well, it's it's definitely kicked off the spate of uh, remakes of J horror films. Yeah. Because uh, you had this, then you had The Grudge. Yes. You had Dark Water. Yeah. Uh, One Missed Call. Okay. That was another one. Uh, yeah, so it basically sparked the um, the sudden interest in Hollywood remaking yeah. J-horror. It doesn't quite work, though, does it? Because, I mean, as we just mentioned, there's the Nensha, mm-hmm. which presumably to a Japanese audience, and this is an assumption, is like, that's fine, I get that. But there's other things like, uh, I know the water around the bodies and like around the, like whenever, yeah. whenever Samara shows up, like water in Japanese culture is associated with ghosts. Right. So you'd see that as a Japanese person. You're like, okay, I get it. There's a ghost. Yeah. But with us, you just think, what is there? Someone called the plumber for God's sake. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I understand. I understand what you mean. Yeah. yeah. It is, um, I mean, it, when you translate things like that, you may as well just do like a complete rewrite rather than just reshoot it with different people in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I sh- is it, yeah, I, I don't think I said specifically, by the way, that uh, it's a remake of Ringu, mm-hmm. which came out in 1998. Yeah. Um, which in turn is based on a novel. Yeah. Mm. It's uh, the highest grossing remake of a horror movie ever. Really? Yes. Um, and uh, it had 40 times the budget of the Japanese original. 40 times? 40 times. Wow. So you could have made Ringu 40 times over if you wanted <laughs> Oh, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember when this came out, um, when we were, well, we would have been 12, 11, 11, yeah, 11, 12, 11, 12 yeah. yeah. Um, it was sort of like the, the it had I th- what I imagine uh, the Blair Witch had yeah. among people of that age when the Blair Witch came out. Right, yeah. Like it had that sort of reputation, like, oh, have you seen The Ring? Like, it's mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. terrifying. I know... Uh, one of my close friends from childhood who was sort of three years older, mm-hmm. he he watched The Ring and was terrified by it. Right, right. And, you know, to me, that was like, oh, my God. It know, must be scary. He's 15. Yeah. And he's, even he's scared. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. yeah. And I think it is, it is, um, it is scary. And I, th- I think the, uh, it's probably le- a lot less effective now yeah. because the, uh, the trope of the sort of lank-haired, Ghost Girl yeah. is uh, as common now in Western uh, horror movies as it uh, was in Japanese horror, yeah. uh, and but still is, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, um, yeah, but I think it, I think it is, it is still quite effective. Like yeah. the, the, there's, there's parts that have aged though. Like the um, we watched it together, and I mentioned this when we were watching it. The the blurred faces on the photos. Yeah, I imagine like if you'd watched that in 2003, you'd be like, whoa. Mm. How do they? Oh, that's that's so creepy. But now you're just like, oh, it's just the distorted digital image. Like you yeah. can do that on Snapchat. Yeah, it's probably exactly. a filter that does exactly that. Yeah. yeah, that's true. It's quite it's quite effective when it's on like CCTV and stuff. Yeah, I that's think. cool. But and uh, when you see he's been like obsessively uh, Noah, I think this yeah. is uh, has been like obsessively taking selfies, <laughs> basically to try and uh, yeah, you know, get a clean photo of himself. Imagine trying to take a passport photo in those yeah. seven days nightmare. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think um, it was probably quite an influential film if uh, for its success as much as its actual content. Because, mm. um, you know, obviously I think 
it probably legitimized uh, sort of ghostly um, horror movies in a way that yeah. perhaps hadn't been done. I think you wouldn't have had something like It Follows without this. No, and I think there, yeah, they're like there's there's an obvious comparison to be made between yeah. this and it, it follows. Yeah, um, something happens, you get cursed. Now what do you do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which makes it a perfect uh, perfect film for us to discuss today. Yeah, perfect. Um, I'd imagine as well that it outdated very quickly because uh, it came out sort of well, like end of two thousand and two. Mm. So it was on the cusp of DVDs becoming like the the main yeah. dominant home media that everyone had. Right. So like VHS. Although I suppose maybe VHS became like a slightly quaint, uh, you know took on a sort of mythical, you know, like ghostly <laughs> yeah. sort of... Well, like, so I think it's like a, a in like a knight's tale. Yeah. In, 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 a, in a story about, like, knights of old, they were going to get a parchment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it's the, the slightly like VHS, old... Yeah. yeah, like the old media. And that's... Because it's old, it's more likely to have... to be haunted. Mm. Whatever. Also, you could, you could argue... I mean, I was thinking to myself, what, why is it video why yeah. is that why does she i mean the the idea i think is that she tortures people using tvs because she was like held captive in this tv room yeah but i guess she could she could make a vhs by burning the images onto the film yeah that's true yeah that is very true you couldn't do that with a dvd no that's true like i i'd like to see the version of rings where they like you know, they're trying to buffer it from... Uh, <laughs> a DVR. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, like, uh, going onto the the directory of the DVD and, like, getting all the files <laughs> off. Yeah. Like, Samara vid yeah. underscore one dot mp4. <laughs> Fly dot mov. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, brackets 3D. Yeah. Yeah. So, overall, Joe, mm. positive thoughts? Yeah, I think generally. Uh, or do you, want, do you want to have some? No, 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 I was, I was asking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it's, it falls into a lot of cliches. Some yeah. of those it started um, yeah. and some of those it uh, continued. The idea, and I know this is a peeve of yours, of having a, a child in a movie who is anything other than just like a normal kid. Yeah, like I, I, I just, I don't know whether it's, we've seen a lot of films that have like sort of slightly precocious, yeah. like, wise beyond their years children in fil- in the films like Aiden the kid in this is mm. not that bad but then that's probably because for two thirds of the film he's just with a babysitter yeah and not in the not in, in the, the film yeah, yeah. but um, then the scenes he is in are pretty pretty atrocious yeah they are pretty hokey yeah. like and he he it's either he's like sixth sense ghost boy yeah or he's uh Macaulay Culkin from Home Alone. Like, there's the t- like he's yeah. either making himself breakfast and packing himself off the suit school. on. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, doing Which his it own does tie. does happen in the yeah. film. Yeah. yeah, and doing his own tie. Yeah. It happens in The Ring and in Home Alone. Yeah. Um, yeah, or he's uh, like creepy, uh, you weren't supposed to help her yeah. sort of like thing. I see dead people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's thinking. Uh, Gorba Vinci, though. Do you want to have another run at that name? Gorb, what is it? Gorbabinski. That's what I said. He said Gorbabinski. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, Let's hear. Gorbabinski, though. Gorbabinski. Gorbabinski. Gorbabinski, though. So Gorbabinski. Yeah. <laughs> you know any of his other films? Uh, well, he's famous for the Pirates of the Caribbean quintology. Yeah, he's done all of those. Right. Uh, Weird, it, except, except maybe one of them, you know, Stranger Tides, I think he didn't do. Oh, okay. But, yeah, he, the vast majority of them um, mm. are his doing. Yeah. Um, the Ring, obviously. Mm. Uh, this year's A Cure for Wellness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't know if I'm that bothered. Dean DeHaan in the lead role. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to go and see it unless I have to. So, okay. listeners, if you've seen A Cure for Wellness, write in with your thoughts. How to survive show at gmail.com. Should yeah. we go and see it? Yeah. Uh, you made The Lone Ranger, Rango. Uh, which are basically facsimiles for Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, well, Rango's an animated feature. Yeah, but down to the, you know, fact Johnny, that Depp. It's got Johnny Depp in the lead role, <laughs> yeah. probably on some sort of quest. Yeah. Uh, Mouse Hunt, though, interesting. Okay. And The Mexican, which was quite good. Have you saw that? Uh, no. Hmm. Don't think so. It's, um, it's about a gun. 
uh, called the Mexican, which is right. like an antique gun, and it's like the story of this gun and. It's, but people contesting who owns it. And stuff. It's quite an interesting story. Right. It's the most interesting like way any like, a story has been told in any Gorbavinsky movie. Right. I did it again. Gorbavinsky. Yeah. <laughs> in any Gorbavinsky movie. Yeah. Because most of the time it's like here's someone who something happens to, and now they've got to go in like on this massive quest with like hundreds of thousands of people in it, and yeah, it's just and here's another thing, and here's another thing, and here's another thing. Even mm. in this one, it's like. Oh, the film should wrap up here nicely. No, here's another thing. Yeah. Here's another thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, Pirates of the Caribbean, the yeah. third one's like three and a half hours Exactly, long. yeah. And like, it's so tied up in its own mythology. Yeah. Like, this, this, I, th- I think they're... Um, the, the first one is good. The second one is okay. Third one, fourth one, not so good. Yeah. But visually, they're very striking. They did some... They made some amazing technological leaps forward. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that Gorvinsky was you know, a significant part of that. And so, you know, he do, I'm sure he has some influence on on the technological leaps forward that have, you know, not on a technical basis perhaps, but mm. the fact that he's, you know, making films that have push these, yeah. to, to break these sort of technological yeah. limits. He's a, very much a James Cameron, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I, I, like, I like Gore Verbinski much more than I like James Cameron. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, yeah. Scum. Oh, scum. <laughs> like, like Mel Gibson yeah so I, I I had some some questions Chris which you know they're, they're to do with the plot of the film but maybe they'll help us when we talk about how to survive okay uh, why seven days I know the answer to this but let's just clarify why is it seven days so seven days because that's how long uh, apparently Samara mm-hmm. lasted in the world to the second yeah yeah that's... but that the the, the uh, film offers no evidence for that other yeah. than that uh, Naomi Watt's character is sitting after the event yeah recovering and just thinks of it well her boyfriend says yeah. how long would you survive down there and she goes seven days yeah and you, everyone in the audience goes oh yeah yeah oh, that makes sense yeah I'm sure a child being thrown into a well head first with Having no been food and water in the dark partially suffocated <laughs> seven days is a long time mm. But whatever, it's just, it's just a movie. She's a ghost, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, why is it video? Why is it on a video? Well, like you said, you can burn mm. the uh, burn the images directly onto the yeah. onto the. This is a good point. Uh, of course, that doesn't make sense for the uh, what appears to be the case in Rings, where it is uh, an online video sent mm. via an email. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe someone transcoded it. I I had a couple of questions as well. I don't know if okay. you uh, you gleaned any information that might help with this okay does uh, the curse track back in order or is it still quite, mm. like everyone still has seven days yeah I think it's, it's, yeah. it's like a Gantt chart so your your seven days begins today yeah I watch the video tomorrow my seven days begins yeah and we're both we're both great. our seven days are running concurrently yeah. yeah so it's not the fact that she got someone else to watch the tape it's that she made a copy of the exactly tape. It. and yeah. so if you make a copy of the tape and someone watches lifted. it. Uh, and someone watches it. Yeah, the curse is lifted. That's right. right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, second question. Um, what if you don't have a phone mm. uh, for her to ring you and tell you that it's seven days? Is it? Do you think it's like a necessary part of the ritual? Well, it doesn't or? appear to be because well, Noah uh, ignores the phone yeah. or she ignores it on his behalf and then mm. deletes the message. So we okay. could assume, therefore, that the message doesn't need to get across verbally right. for it to be. So in it's effect. just it's like the IRA then. It's just like a courtesy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. A warning. <laughs> it's a lot like the IRA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, Joe, those are all the things that maybe we're not so clear on. But what do we know? Uh, we know that the uh, the ghost girl mm. in the ring is Samara Morgan. Mm-hmm. She's a vengeful ghost whose powers include the aforementioned Nensha. Yeah. Um, teleportation. Yeah. Psychokinesis, which is, you know, putting things in your mind, mm-hmm, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, hydrokinesis, so w- controlling water. With your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the ability to drive people and animals to suicide with, uh, you know, by, by, by putting traumatic say, things yeah. in their mind. Yeah. Uh, and an apparent sort of death stare thing that uh, not only is frightening enough to stop their heart dead, or maybe it's that in combination with mm. what appears to be making them see loads of very traumatic things very quickly. Yeah. Uh, but it also is enough to mangle their face. Yeah. 
in a pretty unpleasant visage. Yeah, and uh, as is made apparent by her sort of videotape mm. uh, of her in the psychiatric hospital, um, she likes to torment people mm-hmm. uh, who have the curse prior to killing them. Um, and she's not really motivated by normal sort of ghost tropey things. Uh, so what would that be? Well, things like being laid to rest, you know, having, having your body laid to rest or having your story told mm. or having your killer brought to justice. Those are all the sorts of like ghostly... It's you what know, you'd expect. What, yeah. what Campfire makes, stories. Exactly. Yeah. What, makes, uh, what makes their soul, yeah. you know, unable to rest. Um, so she's just nasty. So she's just evil. She's pure evil. Just a de- she was evil before, though. Yeah, exactly. She mm. was evil when she was alive, and now is so evil that she's transcended the uh, borders between life and death, and uh, become the vengeful spirit. <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's a fair point. So in, on that basis, Chris, if you accidentally watch this video, yeah, this weird art house video, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what would you do to survive? Well, for one thing, um, Noah is sort of blindsided by the fact that uh, the curse is still, you know, he's he's next in line for right, the, yeah. the killing, right? Yeah, yeah. And that appears to be happening because they sort of lose track of who has watched the tape yeah. and when. Because like they're they're focusing on we need to do this before sundown on this day. Yeah, yeah because, because it's when I saw it. Yeah. yeah, like what about Noah? What about poor yeah, old Noah? Yeah, and of course there is a character who in the film who um, is very adamant about the uh, the benefits of documenting uh, who has borrowed and watched tapes yeah, and when. Yeah, uh, and that's the archivist in the psycho the yeah. uh, psychiatry the, ward, the comic relief. Yeah, the video yeah. archivist. Yeah, yeah. who uh, who says how. Um, uh, how angry, or you know, how angry it makes him no, when people mess up his. Be mad. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and how angry it makes him when uh, people take tapes out of his collection without um, telling him, yeah. leaving yeah. a note. Yeah, and then he finds Samara's tape box is empty and mm. goes, "Oh no, I'm mad!" Mm. Like in a sort of light moment. Uh, but yeah, so they they really as soon as she made him watch the tape, I just jot down the the date and time and yeah. then like you know you would think that if they made a note of it noah would at least be a little bit more on edge at that moment yeah yeah you know he'd have some sort of he'd have his wits about him maybe answer the phone yeah. a bit more readily uh and you know might have been able to better defend himself although there doesn't appear to be any um anything that would help you defend against samara yeah can you this isn't one of my ideas for survival. It just just occurred to me. She crawls out of that TV quite slowly. Yeah. Could you just run and get in a car and drive off? Well, she does, unfortunately... Um, Have the ability to teleport. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, which to me reminds me of like fast forwarding on a video. Yeah. You know, like she... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like with, a, with an accompanying sort of she's moving, she's moving so slowly out of that. I was like, oh, how are they going to get... Like, just get on with it. Yeah. And then he, like, cuts. And she's, like, halfway there. And you're like, okay, yeah. I get it. And yeah. it makes him, like, fall through a shelving unit. Yeah. Um, yeah. But basically, they, they poor old Noah mm. is the is the mug of this film, basically. He's been right mugged off yeah. by this film. Um, and, yeah, like, it seems like the, the answers to their problems are right there in the film, in the, in the video archivist. They should yeah. have kept better track of who watched it and when. So you think he was... Um did it, was he in on it? Did he know? Who? The archivist. <laughs> in on it? Yeah. Why would he have been in on it? I don't know. You, you seem to think he, he loves videotapes just because yeah. he's, he's seen loads of videotapes. Yeah. No, he's not in on it. He's just, uh, he's someone who would never lose track of when exactly. he'd watch he, he any get tape. Out. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. What about you? Did you have any ideas? Yeah, it's kind of to do with the uh, the motivations. Um, I guess you too. A how to survive classic. Yeah. Why does she even bother looking into it? Like if, if you know, mm. God forbid, um, your girlfriend Kelly, who was on you know the show this week, mm. God forbid something bad happened to her. <laughs> and, Thanks very much. Yeah, uh, good. And we were at, at a, a memorial service, and you said to me, Joe, I want you to go and research what happened to her. Yeah, I'd say, Yeah, sure, Chris. And then I'd go privately and say, That's his grief talking. Mm. I'm not going to do that because. 
that's bleak. Well, I think I think there are slight mitigating circumstances. Right. Uh, in that, if I'd also said her heart just stopped mm. for no apparent reason. Yeah. Um, no doctor that I asked could ever remember. A, you know, the character in the film is 16, 16 yeah. year old heart stopping instantly. And also I saw her face mm-hmm. and it was all mangled up. Also, like it's a bit conspiratorial that none of the doctors are looking into it or, you know, there's no police looking into it. Yeah. Because she's visibly like deformed from whatever's happened to her. Yeah. So it's not as simple as just having a heart attack, is it? It's like, it's like the doctor's just gone, oh yeah, her heart stopped. It was like, yeah, well, she's dead. Yeah. Hearts stop when people die. Yeah. That is what happens. Have you noticed her face? Yeah, because it's quite different to how her face is normally. Well, look. maybe they had no like point of reference. Maybe they just didn't have a photo of her, and so they just assumed yeah. that was what <laughs> she always looked like. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like a smudged face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every photo they have yeah. of her is, it seems to be out of focus or blurry. <laughs> no, you know why? Or it's got like pen uh, scratched all over it. Yeah. Maybe that's the answer. Now you know why. Maybe that's part of Samara's plan. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, so, do you think that's incorrect then to say that just don't bother doing well, the research? I mean, yeah, but I mean, it's slightly what, what, changing her you, if, if, character motivations because she's a journalist. To, yeah, but like as a journalist, suppose suppose we're in this situation again. You've mm. asked me to go do the research. Where do I start looking? I don't. I don't have access to her medical records. Well, she gets a lucky break, doesn't she? Because she, she walks outside and immediately stumbles onto. A, a hot wealth lead. of information. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When all of the dead girl's friends are talking about exactly what killed her mm. and the circumstances around it. And where to go for the next clue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fair point, yeah. But even then I'd probably be like, what, whatever. This is <laughs> too, too much. Yeah. Well, it's just, just as well that you weren't the, uh, weren't the one... Although it's not just as well. It was yeah, a, I wouldn't yeah. have seen the video. It, yeah. was, it would, would have like solved this whole thing. No one would have seen it. That's true. So on that basis, just don't do not do anything. Don't ever. look into it. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Can't change the motivations of the characters, Joe. Do you think that's that's breaching that rule? Um, I guess she, naturally she's an inquisitive person. And we also get a scene where she's like about to be fired from her job and she's like no I've got a I've got a hot story I'm writing yeah and he's like what the fuck's the story because I'm I've just fired you and, yeah. he, and she's why like, is she fired bad bad, bad at, at her bad job at, bad at job yeah evidently so maybe she so you're thinking she's trying to prove herself yeah that's that, that's 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 established I think right yeah. okay that's not just my idea yeah yeah but then she quits her job right at the end and she's like her kid's like oh just to go to work today she's like no I don't have to go to work anymore because now we just have money, <laughs> apparently. We're not yeah. going to lose this flat, that's for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I never feed you anyway, because I'm so busy well, like, gallivanting. Well, I mean, presumably, the kid's in line for the inheritance from uh, his dead father, mm. who uh, owns what can only be described as an enormous, like, warehouse-sized apartment. Yeah. They must pay a fortune to heat that place. Yeah, a nightmare. Open plan. Yeah. Ugh. Giant windows as well. You made a good point, I thought, uh, which which led me to jot this down as a mm. housewife tip uh, halfway through the film, because um, we were discussing the trailer for Rings, um, yeah, which we've been subjected to uh, a few times in mm-hmm. the cinema each. Um, and uh, in that, there's the uh, the old trope, which is one of my pet peeves. Of yeah. uh, they go to like a dust, uh, the dusty old <laughs> bookman. Uh, where you know they, I, I haven't seen Rings, but I know exactly what will happen. Yeah, it's they Google Samara Morgan, yeah. and there'll be like a newspaper article or a shit website. No, it's, it's gonna it will be like samaramorgan.blogspot.com. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah like yeah. yeah, someone set up a Tumblr. Yeah, whatever. Samara Morgan gifts, and then they'll go see the guy, <laughs> and he'll go, oh Samara, and he'll get like a dusty book down. Yeah. And, you know, all that sort of thing. <laughs> and this Braille, yeah. you know, like, you know, all that sort of shit. Because in the video, in the trailer, he's blind. Yes. Which means he obviously hasn't seen the video. Yeah, and can't ever see the video. Yeah. And so... Good defence mechanism. Yeah, it's a perfect defence mechanism. So if you're at risk of seeing the video, yeah. just blind yourself. If you turn it on and go, you know, one second in, you go, oh, that's that video. <laughs> Look away. 
turn it off. But is that too late? Is that too late? I don't know. Is, is seeing any of it enough to start the start the chain? Or do you have to watch the whole thing? Well, The Ring 2, the sequel, and the spoilers for The Ring 2 here, mm. the opening sequence has uh, a kid showing it to his girlfriend. Right. Um, no, it, with like minutes left on his clock. Okay. Before he gets killed. And um, he's doing it not knowingly. You know, mm-hmm. he's basically... Committing her to a, a doom. Yeah, cursing her. A bit like It Follows, in fact. Yeah. Um, and he sort of peeks around the corner and she's watching the tape. And then um, he uh, he takes a phone call or whatever and then goes back in because the tape's finished. And she's actually been sat there with her hands over her eyes. And she's like, oh, I couldn't watch it. It was too scary. Mm. Or like, you know, it was it was weird or so, you know, like something like that. And uh, and he's like horrified, and then immediately gets killed by Samara, who appears. So maybe you can just shut your eyes. Yeah, seems like a set, set solid defense mechanism. Yeah. is it like she needs to show you those things in order to sort of gain access? Like that's a one yeah. one size fits all master key for people's minds. Look, this is where I um, fell down. This yeah. is <laughs> the ladder that was used to climb up to the. Uh, bunk house that I was in. Yeah, these uh, are the horses that I drowned. Yeah, this is the uh, fly that was on uh, <laughs> the lens when yeah. I filmed this. <laughs> yeah. So I guess it's her point of view, all these things. Yeah, well, I suppose so. Maybe not specifically her, you know, actual she was there POV, mm. but possibly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so just... just um, stick pins in your eyes make sure you do it before you watch the tape though because uh, the machines to make a copy of a tape are probably quite difficult to operate if you haven't have got eyes, eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yes yeah any more from you yeah a couple more of this one is this This is when she's on the ferry on the way to Rocco Island or whatever yeah, it is yeah. um who knows what it is? Doesn't matter. And she goes up to the horse trailer for no reason, and she's like, "Oh, hey, hey, buddy, yeah, hey, hey little, little buddy," and she starts stroking the horse, which gets like irritated and starts like stamping its feet and snorting. Yeah, and she's like, oh. textbook uh, horse friendliness yeah. signs. <laughs> oh, hey, buddy, don't worry, hey, don't don't be don't be worried about me, buddy. Hey, little buddy, and she's like just carries on trying to stroke it, and it's just like foaming at the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like kicking, kick, like snapping loose from its like chains. Yeah. She's like, hey, come on, little buddy. There's no, there's no need for that. Yeah. No buddy. Hey, mm. little buddy. And it's like, at this point, snapped its harness. It's like gnashing its teeth to <laughs> nubs. Yeah. And she's. It breaks out of its container. Yeah. And it starts mm-hmm. dashing around the, the ferry, knocking people over, smashing like windscreens. It's frantic, basically. Yeah. And she's still at this point like, little buddy, come on. Come on, little buddy. <laughs> and she's like, somebody help. It's yeah. like, you caused this. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so my thing is, if you go to any animal and yeah. it's just like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, just leave it. Yeah. Don't... You, don't. If you're obviously it. causing it distress. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, and it's a very childish attitude to be like... Hey, I want the, the horse to like me. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, oh, I want to. Just, I want to. I just want to stroke the horse. <laughs> Why is it mad at me? I don't want it to be mad at me. Stop being mad at me. Yeah. That's basically what's happening. Yeah. Would you have preferred uh, the film, Joe, if the horse was the main character? I've got one more idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Don't put food down the sink. Why? The so the the, the one of the early scenes yeah. after the memorial mm. that you see them scraping plates yeah. of food into the sink. Yeah, and uh, that's a bad idea, isn't it? I mean, we already see that there are various points of the film where, in multiple houses, water is le- seeping out of. Mm. Walls and uh, from under Floors, doorways and yeah. floorboards and things. Now that's classic signs of uh, plumbing distress in the house that you're living in. It's true. Like, and the last thing that you want to be doing is adding to that by just like shoving mashed up food down the 
outflow pipes. Are you sure it's not a like trash processor? Well, like an incinerator yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did think that. Yeah. But then, what's wrong with just using the bin? Um, if you have a food processor, then why wouldn't you use it? I guess. Yeah, but what if you have a bin? Why wouldn't you use it? That's not how it works. What do you mean? The the idea of a food processor is that you don't have the, you just don't have to have the, rotting food in your bin. Yeah, we don't see a food processor. Are they? Are they? They're not really a staple of UK homes. But this isn't in the UK. No, I know. This I, is yeah, but what I'm saying is that is it an assumption that we're making that they're a staple of US kitchens? How many kitchens in the United States have you been in? Um, I've probably been in two or three, and I yeah. remember at least one of them having a food processor. Well, it's not a food pro. It's a you know a, a, a waste disposal. A, yeah, waste disposal. That's <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. A food processor is like yeah. a yeah a blender. A blender. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're doing. Just putting all their waste like bones and mashed potato in yeah. a Nutribullet. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah but like, I still don't. I mean. I, I li- listen. I don't have a, a, f- a waste disposal thing mm-hmm. in my sink, um, so it's difficult for me to make any sort of informed comment. I would err on the side of caution. Mm. If you're, you know, conscientious about waste anyway, especially food waste. I mean, why not have a compost box? Yeah, and then you're helping the environment yeah. right, with your yeah, yeah. with your with your oh, right. food yeah. waste as opposed to just dumping it down the sink. Mm-hmm. Like, you shouldn't be wasting that much food anyway. I know it was a memorial service. Maybe people should have not had eyes bigger than their bellies. Yeah. Why are they eating anyway? It's not really a, you know... What well, here's, here's my question. Yeah. Does the bereaved mother putting food in the sink, yeah. even if she was cramming it down and blocking the sink deliberately, yeah. does that in any way affect the lives and, I mean, survival of yeah. any of the characters in the film. Well, we don't see the mother for the rest of the film, despite the fact that she is mm. the uh, <laughs> the point from which uh, the whole story originates, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, would, would you call it an, an assumption to say that anything happens to her other than she survives? Well, is it an assumption? She's basically Schrodinger's mother, isn't she? Because yeah, she could be. She, as far as we know, yeah. she could be alive or dead. So she, we have to assume she's both. Yes, exactly. So she could be, everything could be fine. Yeah. Sink disp- the waste disposal unit working perfectly. Mm. Everything's fine. Alternatively, it could be not, the waste disposal unit's faulty. Yeah. Pipes get blocked. Mm. Pressure builds up. Mm-hmm. Maybe like a pipe bursts. It hits an electrical outlet yeah. connected to something that she's using. She gets electrocuted. That's another heart attack in the family. She's dead. Yeah, you can't say, you can't prove that that isn't what happened. Yeah, but I mean, maybe we should write to Gore Verbinski. Gore Verbinski. <laughs> yeah, just just to clarify, Gore. Um, <laughs> Gore. Did did she like did the mother? Yeah. Come to any harm because she used the sink? Yeah. To dispose of food. If you're listening, Mister Verbinski, then mm. uh, please get in touch. Yeah, and how to survive pod on Twitter. In the meantime, here's my final thought. On yeah. How to and this this is. A, a bit of a classic sort of format. Okay. You know, back in the day when we used to actually think about these things um, yeah. in, in detail. Yeah. Logistically. Well, so I, th- I think that's, I think you speak for yourself, but yeah. 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 Don't put things in the sink. Yeah. That's a lot of thought into that. Um, well. <laughs> so here's what I do. And this is, this is like drawing on my experience as a web marketer. Yeah. Um, what I would do is, Go to painstaking lengths, and no, I mean, no cost is too high for this job, uh, because you'll die. Yeah. So remortgage your home, whatever, right. to get a web developer to build the following website. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, you go on there, and it clicks. You have to click on copy and play. Right. It's just a nice like click. Right. You click it, and it in the back end it copies the file of the video duplicates it and then plays it out and you go right right okay that's fine yeah you know, that was weird the phone rings oh seven days today but what you've done after that is you're paying for stumble upon traffic you ever used stumble right. upon yeah i've heard of it yeah, yeah so you, 
what you may not know is there's a back end to that site. Okay. Um, for, for marketers. And yeah. for, for just a few cents per user, mm. you can get people to visit any page of your choosing. Right. So you, people would land on that page. They go, oh, what does that mean? You know, click copy and play. play. They copy and play. Click that. Yeah. Now they put the curse. Next person comes along, copy and play. And you go, oh, right. Yeah. And what you've done is you, you're creating copies every time. So no one dies. Yeah. But then, the so what would have to happen though is that the one... So let's say person one goes mm-hmm. on there, mm-hmm. they click copy and play. So now there's video one and video two. Yeah. Right. It it deletes automatically when it duplicates. So the the, the old copy is deleted. Yeah. So you haven't got to worry about storage, if that's what your question was. No, no, no. It wasn't going to be about storage. It was going to be about um, is, the, is person one mm. watching the copy that they generate or are they watching the previous visitor's copy? That's that a good point. Generated? So maybe what happens on that basis is you press copy and play. Yeah. It plays the video the last person made. Exactly, yeah. That's what we need. And then immediately deletes it. Yeah. So the next person comes along, they watch the copy. Yes, exactly. And it yeah. needs a sort of like queue system yeah. to ensure people... Aren't watching the same video. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Or, you know... Is there's a waiting room. So you're, you're, exactly. you're turning five minutes... There are five users ahead of you, whatever. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Which, ticketing and those, system. those sorts of things create demand as well. Yeah. Exclusivity. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Availability uh, yeah. Lack yeah. and lack thereof drives demand. So. Maybe you could look, look up with Burger King or mm-hmm. you know Vogue, sure, or BT even, mm-hmm. and you say we're doing a partnership, exclusive partnership, um, some branded content. Yeah. They'll promote it on their channels, and yeah. because they've got a bit more clout the national newspapers are going to listen and they're going to cover it as well. Yeah. So you're going to get inundated. Yeah. So all this sort of stuff is, falls within your remit of content marketing. Yeah, ballpark, ballpark, yeah. Okay, that's interesting because I've not at any point seen the How to Survive podcast appearing in any national newspapers or uh, I, I've noticed that we've got no, uh, we've not got any brand partnerships with uh, the likes of BT. Yeah. So uh, what have you been up to? If you're listening and you uh, are a brand partnerships manager at BT. Is this how you get work? <laughs> Is that the only way that you've done it in the yeah. past? Yeah. Every episode I edit, I just, at the end of it. Uh, yeah. If anyone needs any uh, yeah. content marketing. <laughs> yeah, you send me a version for approval and yeah. then add a bit at the end. <laughs> Hello, my name is Joe Sherpel. This podcast is sponsored by Joe Sherpel's <laughs> Content Marketing. Yeah. We help your business to achieve growth online. Yeah. Mm. But I've got no track record or CV <laughs> to speak of. <laughs> a great CV. You can Google it online. Yeah. And it's, it okay. says on there. Next week, how to survive Joe's LinkedIn page. <laughs> but of course, that's not next week, Joe. You know what next week is? I've just remembered <laughs> <laughs> that noise. Every ten weeks, that noise comes out. Episode eighty-one of the How to Five podcast will, of course, be as it is every ten weeks. Another edition of the Friday the Thirteenth franchise. Did you notice, Joe, that the uh, Friday the Thirteenth uh, mm. twenty seventeen reboot has been indefinitely suspended? Can't think why. Yeah. Such a lasting format. Yeah, such a rich vein of uh, lore to tap into. Oh, God. I don't know if I'm kind of like sentimental about it now. Yeah. Do you think we're going to get a bit emotional when we watch the Friday Friday the 13th uh, reboot? Is that going to be the last one now? Yeah. Because it wasn't originally going to be, but now it will be. Yeah. Maybe. Mm. So we'll see you in seven days. For another edition of the How to Survive podcast, that'll yeah. be episode 81. Yeah, this yeah. was episode 80. Eight, eight and a zero, Joe, they look a bit like rings, don't they? Three rings there. Yeah. yeah. You could, you could, infinity ring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is, yeah. I mean, Jason goes to hell next week, right? Jason goes to hell, yeah. Friday the 13th, part nine. Part nine. Jason goes to hell. Yes. Do you think, uh, a few questions ahead of that. Okay. Do you think he's going to be in hell at any point? Uh, yeah, but, um, as if it follows the precedent set by Jason goes to man or Jason takes Manhattan, mm. uh, he won't get there until an hour and 10 minutes into the movie. Yeah. Uh, and will only be there for 15 minutes. Yeah. So we and it, it won't recognizably be hell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Next question. Um, will any old characters be making a reappearance? God, I hope not, because I can't remember any of them. <laughs> you tell me Jarvis and Roy Burns. Those <laughs> Roy Burns. Roy Burns. <laughs> Roy Burns has had more traction on this show than he has in any other <laughs> discussion in horror movies. Yeah. Including the planning and filming of Friday the 13th, The New Blood. Yeah. New Blood? Yeah, yeah part five, isn't it? Yeah. No, it wasn't The New Blood. It, it was, was the, uh, the, uh, A New, uh, beginning. new beginning. Yeah. yeah. The New Blood was... Oh, several not, weeks yeah so tune in for that that promises to be a roller coaster of emotion for both of us uh, and in the meantime if you'd like to get in touch then the twitter handle is at how to survive pod the email address is how to survive show at gmail.com and if you want to avoid dying uh, because you listened to this and got cursed make sure you uh, share it with your friends make a copy and send it on yeah on facebook twitter whatever means you use to promote things you like because that's a good thing to do. Yeah. We did a nice email in today. You read that, didn't you? Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah, that was yeah. good. A, a, a fan of the show. Yeah. Said she uh, she looks forward to it every week and we should not stop. Not that we were threatening to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Joe, what will happen to the people who listen to it? Is that from the film? Yeah, that's the ending. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good, good ending, mate. Yeah. yeah. See you. Bye.